Welcome. Thanks for viewing this reading of The Day the World Went Wacky by Janine Souter with illustrations by Richard Gunther. Special thanks to Ms. Souter, Mr. Gunther, and Master Books. This video was created with permission from Master Books, a division of Leaf Publishing Group. All rights to this material belong to the publisher. Details about the publisher and how you can get your own copy of this book are in the video description. Parents, as you are no doubt aware, the world in the year 2020 has become wacky in a way that was certainly unimaginable in 2008 when this book was originally published. Yet, this book is perhaps more relevant now than ever in our history. This video has been created in the hopes of offering you a tool to help your children cope with what they are hearing on the news and at the dinner table. But even more importantly, this book presents the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that children can understand. We hope it is a blessing and a help to you and your kids. The Day the World Went Wacky by Janine Souter, illustrated by Richard Gunther. A little while back, I was eating my lunch, when I got out an apple and took a big crunch. The next thing you know, I was in a big chair, with my mouth open wide and my feet in the air. And just as the dentist put in a huge filling, my ears were half deaf with the noise of the drilling. A really hard question came into my brain, and my really hard question was, did God make pain? Then all sorts of crazy thoughts rushed through my mind. Why was my great-grandma Nellie born blind? Why did God make great big prickles and sores and man-eating bears that can walk on all fours? Why do bad things sometimes happen to me? Like the time that my bottom got stung by a bee. If God made the world and he made it all good, then why doesn't everything work like it should? That night at my house, I had had quite enough. I reached for the Bible to find out some stuff. I opened the cover to search for a clue, and there was the answer. I'll tell it to you. The key to this mystery is found in the past. The Bible says God made the world really fast. It took God six days to create earth and space, and right on day six, he invented our race. When the world was brand new, well, nothing went wrong. The first man and woman were both fit and strong. They ate and they played. It was all really cool. Their brains were quite smart, so they didn't need school. The creatures in Eden were all best of friends, so Adam did not need to keep them in pens. Adam and Eve were good friends with them too, as they lived in God's wonderful paradise zoo. And the Lord God himself often came for a walk. It was great to be near him, and they loved to talk. He'd given him them fruit from the garden to eat. Back then nothing died, so they didn't eat meat. Now, believe it or not, there was only one rule. Not a whole bunch like they have at my school. God had said, this whole garden is yours to share, but don't eat the fruit from that tree over there. That tree over there makes you know bad and good. It was perfectly plain and they both understood. Cause the words Adam heard really stuck in his head. Don't eat that fruit or one day you'll be dead. But one day the woman just happened to meet a big tricky snake that walked on four feet. It was really the devil who told a big lie. He said, eat the fruit because you won't really die. You should eat it all day if you want to be wise. The fruit from that tree 
will just open your eyes. It looked quite delicious, so Eve dug right in. She gave some to Adam, and that started sin. Now the fruit that they ate had a really nice taste. But as they were eating, Eve noticed her waist. They both said at once, my body's on show. They ran to get fig leaves and started to sew. They made the first clothes in the garden right then to cover their bodies, just finishing when God came to the garden as he often did. Feeling quite guilty, they ran off and hid. God called out to Adam and asked, where are you? Adam called back, I'm not sure what to do. We've nothing to wear and we feel a bit rude chatting with you while we're both in the nude. So God said, you're naked? How did you find out? Did you eat from the tree that I warned you about? Adam said, God, it, it's the fault of my wife. She gave me the fruit that was started, that has started this strife. The woman said, I'm not the one you should blame. That snake over there was in on the game. He tricked me by saying that you were unfair for making strict rules for this garden we share. Now Satan had entered that serpent to trick Adam's wife, Eve, and it worked pretty quick. So God cursed him there saying, crawl on your belly through the dust and the grime and the mud that is snowy. Then God told a riddle right there to the snake, describing how one day this sin he would break. I'm sending a person to crush in your head, but first you will bite on his foot, the Lord said. What this riddle meant was that Jesus would come to die for our sins because he loves everyone. Then Eve heard God say, sin will make you feel sad and having your babies will hurt really bad. Next, God said to Adam, your sins cursed the ground. You won't find your breakfast just hanging around. In future, when you try to grow food from seeds, you'll sweat and work hard just to fight off the weeds. From now on, your bodies will start to get sick, and one day your heart will beat its last tick. Because of the sin of you and your wife, one day there will be an end to your life. God was quite sad because he knew it was true, that now there was something he needed to do. The Lord killed an animal and took off its skin and then used the blood as a payment for sin. Then out of that skin and that animal hair, God made the two of them something to wear. Animals can't really pay for our sin, but Jesus' blood can, and this pointed to him. Now there in the garden, another tree stood, God's great tree of life with its fruit that was good. Eating that fruit kept you living forever. It meant that your body would never die, ever. But if we lived forever in sin, we'd be stuck, surrounded by sin for eternity. Yuck. The world, whole world would just be unendingly bad. Zillions of years for us all to feel sad. So God said that Eden was now out of bounds. And to make sure they didn't sneak back in the grounds, a swift flaming sword blocked off the way in, along with some angels they called cherubim. Well, that day was surely the worst day of all. It was such a bad day that we call it the fall. We were close to God once, but then sin came along. It's the cause of all things that we see going wrong. And into the world, the sin has brought death and cancer and pimples and shortness of breath and teasing and fighting and many a war and robbers and blindness and bullies and more. 
You might have thought this has nothing to do with you or your family, but that isn't true. Like Adam and Eve, we all want our own way. It's clear in the Bible, we all disobey. And sin is as vile and as gross as can be. You're stuck in this stuff and it's in you and me. That sin in our life means we can't go to heaven unless we trust Jesus to have it forgiven. So next time your molar is giving you pain, or your bike gets a flat, or you're caught in the rain, remember why we're in the mess that we're in. The world has gone wacky because of this sin. Now no one can go and see Eden today, because Noah's flood was, has washed it away. But God has a plan to make everything new for all those who love him. Does that include you? Janine Souter has worked with children professionally and in various ministry roles. This series of books was born out of her desire to present basic theology and apologetics to the next generation. She lives in Melbourne, Australia. Richard Gunther has illustrated many books for both children and adults, as well as drawing cartoons for a number of newspapers and magazines and designing a range of educational materials. He lives in Timaru, New Zealand. Once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have questions about the gospel or need help in some way, please reach out to me, john at johnclawton.org. You can find other helpful information at our website, lawtonfamily.org. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. For details about this book and its publisher, see the description below. Thank you.